Okay. okay, now we're going to look at some ear structures. On the outside of the ear, you have your auricle or penna. Okay, you've got the cartilaginous ring, the rim around the outside called the helix, and then you have the lobule or earlobe. Sound comes in through the external acoustic meatus right here and hits the tympanic membrane, which is this structure here. After it hits the tympanic membrane, it will move into the middle ear. So it'll hit this tympanic membrane and then it will vibrate a series of bones called ear ossicles, which will send the sound into this structure right here called the vestibule and the cochlea. That information will be picked up by the nerve and sent to the brain. And we'll look at this structure in a little bit more detail and the ear ossicles in a minute. So this is your external ear, this is your middle ear, and this is your inner ear. In order to keep the pressure from building up in the middle ear, you have to have a tube for release from all that vibration. So you have your pharyngotympanic tube or your eustachian tube that connects the middle ear with the pharynx so that you can relieve the pressure. Now pay attention to some of your bony structures on these mo ear models as well, just like with the eye, because I have my petrous portion of my temporal bone, which is where my ear ossicles are. This is all temporal bone, so this is the styloid process of my temporal bone. Here's petrous portion, and remember at the end of the petrous portion you have a canal for the internal carotid artery called the carotid canal, and here's your carotid artery in the carotid canal. You can see it there. And you can see it coming out down here through that carotid canal. This is the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Your jugular foramen would be here. This hole with this little yellow structure hanging out of it. This yellow thing is actually the facial nerve and it comes out of the stylomastoid foramen. You can actually see that up there. And here's your, in, your carot uh, carotid canal with your internal carotid artery. So make sure you pay attention to those types of structures when you're studying this as well. Okay, so here I have my inner ear apparatus out of this ear, and we'll look at some bigger ones of this as well. But you can see that you have this little kind of conch shell structure here. I took the top of it off, but that's called your cochlea. That's where you hear information. This area right here is called the vestibule, this kind of widened area in the middle. And then you have these three tubes called the semicircular canal. Now the inner ear apparatus is basically a bony labyrinth, which is all the white part. It's all bone. It's covering a membranous labyrinth, which is represented on these models in gray. So all of these bony mazes have membranous mazes inside of them. So there's tubes surrounded by bones for protection. The semicircular canals are for balance, as well as the vestibule portion right here is also for balance. So Sound is going to be vibrated through your ear ossicles. The malleus is on the tympanic membrane, and then it will vibrate the incus, and then the incus will vibrate a bone called the stapes. And I don't have those on this model, but we will look at those in a second. And the stapes attaches to the vestibule right here at this little membrane called the oval window. The base of the stapes is oval-shaped, looks just like this. And so the stapes attaches here and vibrates the fluid inside of this structure so that sound waves can travel through the cochlea. The excess sound waves will escape the vestibule and the bony labyrinth through this little round hole called the round window. The round window is round, the oval window is oval. These semicircular canals, there's three of them, they sit in the ear like this, kind of, are... Um, have names individually based on location. You've got the lateral semicircular canal, which is kind of parallel to the floor. You have the anterior semicircular canal closer to the cochlea, and you have your posterior semicircular canal uh, farther away. Inside, you have your uh, membranous labyrinth here. 
these membranes are full of fluid and they end in a little uh, widened structure called an ampulla. And inside that ampulla you have a little organ, a sensory organ called a macula, that, or a crista ampullaris, sorry, that picks up information for rotational movement basically. So like ballerinas and stuff like spinning your head around, this a lot, these semi circuit canals allow you to tell where your head is when you're spinning around. You also have two sac-like structures here in the vestibule that help with balance. This one is called the utricle. It's continuous with the semicircular canals. And this one is called the saccule. These are also filled with fluid and have a little sensory organ inside of them called the macula. So you have a macula in your utricle and a macula in your saccule. And those macula pick up um, static movement, so like moving uh, f walking forward, walking backwards, you know, up and down, those types of movements. And the fluid inside of here is going to allow those sensory organs to function. Now the vestibular portion of your nerve will come out of the vestibule, okay, which is right here, collect information from the semicircular canals in the vestibule, and then become part of the vestibular cochlear nerve, which is this whole thing. But this portion alone would just be a vestibular nerve. The cochlea is also a series of tubes. It's a little bit different. We'll look at a close-up of the cochlea, but you, there's three tubes in the cochlea. You have this cochlear duct in the middle, and these tubes are rolled up into this spiral. And you have an organ in here called the organ of corti that responds to vibrations and allows you to pick up your uh, sense of hearing. Off of the cochlea, you have the cochlear duct. I mean the cochlear nerve, excuse me. So cochlear nerve and vestibular nerve come together to make vestibular cochlear nerve. This little guy right here, notice it's not really connected to anything here. This is actually the facial nerve. Facial nerve runs right with vestibular cochlear in that internal acoustic meatus. So facial nerve comes over this vestibular cochlear nerve and passes out through that stylomastoid foramen. Okay, now we'll look at this other ear that we have here. Again, you have the auricle or the pinna, helix, lobule, external acoustic meatus, tympanic membrane would be here. So that's the external ear. Here's your middle ear. So you have your tympanic membrane here, and then you have your eustachian tube. You have a little muscle associated with that eustachian tube called your tensor tympani muscle that assists with regulating vibrations. Here's your middle ear. So you have your ear ossicles and the malleus and the incus are missing on this model but you can see the stapes attached to the vestibule there. It's shaped like a stirrup. Okay, and then right underneath of that, if I took it off, you'd have your oval window. Then you have your semicircular canals here. You have lateral, anterior, posterior. You have your vestibule in the middle. You've got your cochlea, cochlear nerve here. You can see in your internal acoustic meatus here, you have your vestibular cochlear nerve and your facial nerve here. You also have your internal carotid artery in your uh, carotid canal. You can see it coming out down here. Styloid process, jugular vein in the jugular foramen underneath. Styloid process, mastoid process. Here's your stylomastoid foramen with your facial nerve. Okay, now this is the uh, inner ear apparatus and middle ear taken out. You can see your tympanic membrane here very nicely. Here's your ear ossicles, malleus. You can see that it's attached to the tympanic membrane. Here's your incus right here. And here's your stapes. Stapes is attached to the vestibule right here. Here's your cochlea, your semicircular canals your utricle, your saccule, your ampulla, this is the anterior semicircular canal, here's your cochlear nerve, 
vestibular nerve. Okay, here's another version of that. Cochlea, vestibule. On the vestibule, you have your oval window and your round window here. You have your saccule, utricle, semicircular canals, bony labyrinth, and membranous labyrinth. This is your ampulla with your crista ampullaris inside. So this would be anterior semicircular canal, lateral, posterior semicircular canal. You can see inside your cochlea. Here's your cochlear nerve, vestibular nerve. They'd come together to make vestibular cochlear. You can see your three chambers inside your cochlea, which we're going to look at a giant close-up of next. But this is your scala media in blue. This is your scala vestibuli, pink, and scala tympani in green. Okay, now I don't know if I'm going to make it. My camera's dying, so I'm going to try to go through this fast. But this is the cochlea cross section. You've got three chambers, scala media filled with endolymph is a fluid, scala vestibuli and scala tympani both filled with perilymph. This right here is called your vestibular membrane, which is why this is the scala vestibuli. This structure is your tectoral membrane. These are your hair cells with your stereocilia. These are your actual receptors for sound. They sit on a basilar membrane. This vascular structure is the stria vascularis. This is your spiral ganglion where